the stern paddle, or a faulty balance could mean a drenching or maybe disaster. Or, like any primitive sport, there is ever present that tingling element of danger. Here in Hawaii, the sports of the people reflect their temperament. Simple, direct, and unencumbered by the frills and slipperies of more civilized contests. A sport like body service requires no equipment save a sturdy swimming stroke and a speaking acquaintance with luck. Regulation sport has no more boundaries than the ocean. It's man against the sea. The rules are simple. Swim out to where the swells are piling up in the waves, catch the crest of a comber, and ride it onto the beach at 30 miles an hour. Simple. Yes, but let the swimmer get into the trough of the waves ahead of the crest, and tons of breaking water are liable to crash down on his head and pound him under. Here is no sport for the swimming pool athlete. There's only skill between a thrill and a slightly broken neck. Probably best known of all wave riding sports is surfboarding. The gentle art of providing a streamlined ironing board while a breaker pushes you from the bay to the beach in nothing flat. The boards are carved from a solid slab of wood or built up of laminated strips and vary in weight from 50 to 100 pounds. Here is a sport that is typically Hawaiian, and the malahini, or newcomer, is usually as familiar with the picture of this island pastime as he is with the hula. But it's by no means as simple as it looks on the travel poster. The first thing to do is to paddle out and find an incoming wave, a gentle swell that looks like it is gathering up enough steam to be a big breaker. There are four waves which carry the rider to the shore, and the transfer from the first to each of the three succeeding waves is made without slackening speed and with the board at an almost horizontal angle. When the board is in the proper riding position, on the slope of the wave just ahead of the crest, the surf buster assumes his stance. He is well back on the board, up tilting the bow so as to present as little surface as possible to the water. This allows him to plane forward with a minimum of friction or drag. Using the feet as a rudder and shifting the weight of the body keeps the proper direction in balance and prevents the surfboarder from doing a back one and a half into the drink. The simple pleasures of our Pacific territory were mainly derived for individual participation. But one Hawaiian sport that called for interdependent teamwork, a primary element in most American games, is canoeing. These outrigger crafts are tricky things to handle, and perfect coordination between each paddle is essential. The boats themselves are of the traditional native design, built for swift passage in boiling surf. To select the proper wood, cure it, and fashion it by hand into a seaworthy piece of sporting equipment may take as long as 10 years. A paddle out of cadence, or a sudden shift of balance, and the canoe would be smashed to mahogany flinders on the relentless coral. So caution is the question, and teamwork is the answer. To the Hawaiian, Riding a surfboard is as easy as rolling off a log, so the novice learns just that way. Sliding the board across a log spindle simulates any motion of the surf and demands a steady equilibrium from this cute Kehiki Wahini to keep from landing flat on her Mahopilani. This youngster is on his way to the wildest waves in Waikiki, where it's little Georgie Kapu, veteran surfboarder at the age of five, and as well known in the island as Diamond Head. The preliminary paddling may look easy, but even that takes a strong back and plenty of practice. There's not much of them, but a little can go a long way on a surfboard. After about two weeks of diligent effort, even the visitor from the mainland can master the technique of hitting the beach on a board without swallowing too much of the Pacific Ocean. But this tandem trip calls for the utmost in skill and counterpoise.
standing high on a surfboard requires a fine sense of balance and a flair for acrobatics. It takes a certain amount of skill to hold one of these prancing planks to the press of a comber that may attain the height of 15 feet before it breaks. But the first lesson is always cautious. And here the primary rule is never let go of the board. To loosen one's grip is to be at the mercy of 100 heavy pounds of falling core wood and a seething ton of white water. But skill is only a matter of time. And time in the islands is as plentiful as the waves. It takes more than skill to be a sportsman of the surf. It takes blood that tingles at the thunder of a rolling feather of foam, at the warm, subtle caress of the tropic sun, and the champagne taste of the wind drifted spray. But the only talent that's really essential to any sport in Hawaii is an infinite capacity for enjoying oneself. That is the inspiration that sends these people out to where the breakers are born. That is the spirit that frolics them back to the beach on the wide, white shoulders of the waves. But the exhilaration of pure sport gives no heed to the hours, as night, with a sunset brush, paints the first delicate coats of dust over the tropic seascape. So long as there is a surf on the island, there will be sport. So long as there are winds that ruffle the southern seas into combers to wash the pearly margin of Wapiki Beach, there will be sportsmen to rise the crest.